from the DSM. I didn't make these up. Okay, this is what it says if you went there and read it for yourself. Often criticized, again, remember, four or more of these. So all you need to do is have four of these in a pattern in your life, and you're passive aggressive. Okay? Think about that. Often criticizes and scorns people in authority or positions of authority. Mm, we don't like authority when we're passive aggressive. But we don't want anybody to know that we don't like authority. See? We want to give the facade that we like authority, but we're going to indirectly be insubordinate, just like those soldiers soldiers during World War II, expresses envy and resentment toward those who are perceived as more fortunate. Okay? So we don't like people who are more fortunate than us, right? So we lash out at them because they've done better than us, and we don't like somebody doing better than us, and we get resentful about that. Voices, exaggeration, and persistent complaints of personal misfortune. Woe is me, is what I'll call it. Okay? Oh, poor me. Look at me. I didn't get a fair shake. I didn't, this wasn't fair. Something happened to me. Boy, it sounds a lot like the liberals of our day. Listen, Amen. maybe us conservative Christians are more liberal than we think. <laughs> Alternates fluidly between hostile defiance and what? Contrition. So they're able to go back and forth. One moment, they're going to be hostilely defined. I'm not doing that behind somebody's back. But all of a sudden, when the authority appears, oh, yeah, okay, I'll do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Right? And they know how to waffle back and forth between this thing. Okay? And they're masters at it. That's what the personality trait is. One minute, they're, oh, okay, yep, uh -huh, uh -huh, I'll do it. And the very next minute, they could be, I'm not doing that. That's stupid. They don't even know what they're doing. Right? So you waffle back and forth between all of that. Let's look at it practically. We looked at clinically, but let's look practically at this. Let me give you a, a couple of definitions on a practical level. It is a mental defense mechanism that allows people who are not comfortable being openly aggressive uh, get what they want under the guise of still trying to please others. They often want their way, but they also want others to like them. Right? And that's what it's all about. We want everybody to be our friend. But we also want to do things our way. And you can't have it both ways unless you're passive aggressive. You spend your whole life trying to get everybody to like you, but also doing things the way you want and the way you want them done and getting your way. Also, a chronic condition in which a person seems to comply with obligations, desires of others, but actually passively resists them in the process of becoming increasingly hostile or angry. It's awfully quiet in here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are some of you kind of thinking to yourself, boy, um, I have some of those traits in my life. Lord, maybe you're showing me something that I'm struggling with some things that I maybe thought I had mastered. See? This is what I'm trying to do in this portion of this message this morning. Is to show all of us here, okay, that we still have some things to work on. Amen. Amen. And that we need to identify these things in our life. Because we can go on and pretend that we're all great and everything's going well. Okay? And we can lie to ourselves and we can fool ourselves and that's fine. But we will not fool God at the pregnancy of Christ. For sure. Okay? Amen. There is no passive aggressiveness at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? None. And there's no passive aggressiveness when it comes to God. He knows when you say you're going to do something, if you do it actually or not. He even knows what's in your heart. Okay? Examples of passive aggressiveness. This is kind of funny. I pulled some pictures offline of some passive aggressive things. Are you ready for this? It's kind of funny. This is a stop sign, and below it must be a neighbor who lives around it. It says, That means you, young man in the blue suburban, and turn the music down. Okay? That's a passive aggressive way of dealing with a problem or situation. I'm not going to directly deal with it, but I'll passively deal with it in an aggressive, a very aggressive way. Okay? Here's a birthday date. Happy birthday, Jason. Even if you did nothing for mine, I still love you. Okay? Very passive aggressive there. All right? Thanks, Mom. Love you too. Hopefully I'll remember your birthday next year, right? Uh, the next one. We waited 30 minutes. No service. Okay? That's a little passive aggressiveness coming out there. All right? You got a conflict, a problem, you're not going to deal with it directly by saying, hey, can we get some service over here? But you're going to write in ketchup and mustard. We waited 30 minutes and still didn't get service and then walk out. Okay? That's a little kooky. <laughs> some of these, if you look at that and say, you know, that's a good idea. It might be a little deeper in passive aggressiveness than you want to be. My husband has H1N1 and he made this sandwich. This was put in a fridge at a, a, a lady at work. Uh, she wrote this on her sandwich and put it in there because somebody kept stealing her food out 
of the fridge, right? So she writes on there, my husband has H1N1 and he made this sandwich. Now that is again, passively, aggressively dealing with the situation instead of just dealing with it directly and getting it resolved. Amen? Okay, here's another one. If you want some, ask, right? I will share, no need to take a half a slice uh, a half a slice of bread without asking, right? Okay. Here's a note that somebody wrote. To the person who helped themselves to my entire carton of eggs, I saw that you did, and I know I saw uh, what you did, and I know who you are. I sit ten steps from the fridge, you big goo. The jig is up, pal. But hang on, today's your lucky day. I'm not going to say a word to anyone. But moving forward, if so much as a grape goes missing from either refrigerator, then I'm going to HR. Have a nice day. <laughs> okay? Again, that's passively, aggressively dealing with the situation instead of just instead of just directly going to that person. Obviously, the person knew who it was, so go to them and say, you know, I noticed you took some eggs, and next time, if you, I don't mind, but next time, if you could, please ask. All right? Just dealing with it. Uh, in, a, in, in a direct fashion. See, but we don't do this, right? We don't want to deal with problems. We don't want to have conflict. We don't want to deal with things directly because we want everybody to like us. Ultimately, is a, a, a manifestation of pride, I believe. Yes. Okay? But we also want to resolve our conflict, so we do it in a sideways manner that ends up hurting people. Okay? It ends up causing bad feelings instead of just working it out. And you know what? Ultimately, it's the source root of bitterness in all of this, okay? Now, let's move on in just a little bit. Some of the manifestations of passive-aggressive. Behaviors that are often exhibited by passive-aggressive people. This is very interesting to look at this, because when I began to read this, I thought, wow, this is amazing that people would actually do this to themselves. But look at this. Avoiding, evading problems by burying an angry head in the sand. So they're just going to avoid the whole situation altogether. Okay? But when you're angry about something, you cannot avoid it. You can't. It is impossible. It's like water pressure. Once you plug the hole on one side, it's going to come out somewhere else. Amen. Bitterness is the same way. Amen? Procrastinating. Intentionally putting off important things for less ones. Look at number three. Obstructing, deliberately stalling or preventing an event or process. These people will be in a workplace or maybe even in a church and they'll deliberately stop or obstruct progress because they're bitter about something. That is a passive aggressive way of dealing with it. I'm not gonna deal with it directly, but what I'll do is uh, I'll monopolize everybody's time in a meeting so that we don't get every, anything done. That's my passive-aggressive way of getting back at people for not doing what I wanted them to do, or something that hurt me, or some wrong that was perceived against me. Sulking, being silent or sullen and resentful in order to get attention or sympathy. Mm. Right? Listen, passive-aggressiveness is not just found in adults. Okay? You can notice passive-aggressive behavior in your children. Let me tell you, when you notice passive-aggressive behavior in your children, what you need to do is it is your job, according to the Word of God, to train that out of them. Okay? It's your job to train it out of them. And if you don't train that out of your children, guess what happens? They will become passive-aggressive adults. And let me tell you something, that people who exhibit chronic passive-aggressive behavior also exhibit many problems in their life, from marital problems to relational problems to work problems to conflicts to personal relationships, a whole gamut of things. And oftentimes, destruction lies in their way. And they really can never get a good relationship with somebody. They don't really have long-term relationships with people. They kind of jump from one person to the next, over here, over here, because the passive aggressiveness eventually begins to eat away at that relationship, even a marriage. It might just take a little longer in a marriage, that's all. Chronic lateness.